Hey everybody, welcome to this Ocean Life podcast. I'm your host, Josh Peterson. This episode is brought to you by Burnout Sun Care, a Santa Cruz-based company that specializes in chemical-free, environmentally friendly, and reef-safe sunscreens for water sports athletes and health-conscious families everywhere. Check them out at burnoutsun.com. In this episode number 11, we speak with Captain James Marco from South Florida, who's a charter boat fishing captain in that area. Now, James goes out and catches all the normal fish down there and does a lot of really neat stuff. But what's really special is his work with the Goliath grouper, an endangered species that reaches over 500 pounds. Captain James shares with us his stories from working with this fish for many, many years, his time bringing people out to interact with the fish, and also doing a lot of research to help us understand how to better protect and serve these fish. A lot of fun stories from the South Florida waters. Really lucky to have James. So thanks so much for being here. Thanks for all the great words on the podcast and your support. And now let's get into the ocean life of Captain James Marco. James, welcome to the show today. I appreciate you uh, being here. Yeah, man, no problem. So I'd do it. Yeah, right on. You know, it's it's so fun looking at all the th- all the pictures you have on Instagram and your website because uh, you're doing some <laughs> pretty radical things with some radical fish. And uh, I'm at heart a fish nerd. I spent my my college years studying fish, and so uh, <laughs> while I don't chase them in the way you do, I just can't wait to hear about about these things. Um, so start by telling us and just describing, you know, where you're at, where are you located, uh, what the water conditions like, and just kind of describing the ocean that, you know, that you live in and play in every day. Um, well, I'm, I live in Cape Coral, Florida. I grew up here most of my life. Um, where we fish is the Gulf coast. So Boca Grande, the Sanibel Island, but for a couple months out of the year, I go to the other coast for Stewart chasing sailfish and mahi. Hmm. Um, I've got a two boat operation that we run on both coasts. Um, primarily right now we're working with our fishery, our state officials on the Goliath grouper. Mm -hmm. So that's been taking up a lot of my time over here. Um, where we're at in Boca Grande is the, uh, biggest population in the whole world for this fish. And, um, I get the opportunity. I'm truly blessed to uh, get the opportunity just to be able to target an endangered species on a daily routine and I get to experience it with my clients, you know, it's a really cool operation we've developed with the state fishery and my business as a charter captain to give that once in a lifetime experience to anybody that ever comes on my boat to target this fish. Yeah. Pretty amazing. I mean, uh, they're just giant animals and the opportunity to see one up close, let alone touch one and even like be in the water with one, like you allow your, your guys, your clients, is, is is crazy so so talk about how you got to this point you know so you grew up in cape coral and so again is that just for a frame of reference is that in the florida keys is that on mainland florida and then how did you get to the point where you grew up in this really amazing water area environment to the point where you're working with the state working with these massive fish talk about that sort of how you got there well where we're located is like two hours south of tampa we would be technically on the west coast of florida Mm. um but we're also about four hours north of the florida keys so we have an opportunity to get into the tarpon and you know a couple other species that you would find down the key yeah um it's a pretty cool fishery and then on the other coast west palm area is, is a good way to describe it so i would say about two hours, an hour and a half north of Miami. And then over there, because of the water depth changes, um, you get the chase to really chase pelagics hard as far as sailfish and mahi or dorado or, you know, there's a wahoo, there's a bunch of good fish over there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Good times for sure. But uh, over here, you know, where I've grown up, uh, my parents, um, they met here at a young age. They grew up, they actually grew up back home in Philly, moved down here, started a life together. My father uh, actually started his own business in his garage. So at a young age, you know, I learned how to work hard and you, you have to work hard to get what you want. And um, saw his company develop over the years. And now it's, it's very, it's pretty cool. Cool. It's a pest control company, which is like whatever, but it's Florida, it's job security. Oh, you man. know, we got bugs everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, 
you know, it was cool growing up, you know, working for him on the side and uh, while I was going to school and, and just be able to deal with the type, different types of wildlife. So that really got me into stuff. Um, then I left for college, graduated with a marketing degree, came back down here and uh, started helping my parents' company for a while. And then uh, I just, my passion was always fishing growing up. You know, I played sports. We would have practice in whatever sport I was playing and then we'd be fishing afterwards. You know, it's just what we did where yeah. we're at. <clears throat> we have such an amazing fishery. You can literally just stop on the side of the road and fish. Oh man. Which is pretty it was just pretty cool, you know. It, yeah. It, it feeds the addiction for sure. <laughs> um, and then about uh, five years ago, I met my beautiful fiance. Um, she was a up north girl, never did any outdoor stuff. Um, <laughs> it was something I wanted to get her involved in. And in a way, it fed my passion even more. <clears throat> and I realized that. You know, I want, I want to make a life on the water. Mm. And I took the leap into the charter business a couple of years ago, and it's just really paid off. You know, I, the quote that, you know, if you love what you do, you know, you'll never have to worry about a dollar in a day is so correct. I mean, yeah. I don't ever have to worry about money. I'm doing what I love every day. Yeah. My passion's there. It, it's never worked to me. You know, I get yeah. to go do what I love every day, Monday through Friday. Right on. Um now that being said this goliath grouper it's always been in our backyard you know it's always been a fish out there yeah people have always tried to you know play with it you know it's a big fish you know the, the world record right now is 580 pounds Jeez. and we know there's ones out there that are close to 700 you just can't you know make it a world record style catch because of the fact that it's an endangered species yeah one of the reasons it's an endangered species in the 1990s it was overfished and, mm -hmm. i mean there wasn't a whole lot left um this fish has just made an amazing recovery um especially in our area and around the state that are a lot of researchers from around the the pretty much the world i know we have some guys in australia that have asked some questions how we brought this fish back so strong yeah you know that, that's very tough to do in this day and age yeah. to bring any type of endangered species back strong and we did with this fish and we completely shut it down as far as right. the state ran governments so yeah it's really driven the population up it's not where everybody thinks it is you know some people locals i would say consider it a nuisance fish mm -hmm. um it's truly not. I mean, trust me, I deal with it every day. Yeah. <laughs> every, I catch more Goliath grouper on a day-to-day -day basis right now than anybody in the world. Yeah. I mean, it's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. And I can tell you right now, it's not as bad as we think. I mean, mm -hmm. I have scientific research that backs everything up that we've been doing, you know, which is great. You know, it, it's good to know what we're doing is right. Um, do I think there is a solution? Yeah, there's a happy medium eventually, but not quite yet. I yeah. think the next five, maybe 10 years, you open a slot on yep. this fish. I agree yep. with that. You make a small slot. You don't go out there and kill the dinosaurs and the trophy styles. It's just, it's just not human no more. You know, yeah, let's yeah. all protect our, let's protect our fishery, you know, comparative just mounting something on the wall you know i've got a great taxidermist that will make the best replica ever you know? oh, yeah like, yeah take a go. picture and bring it into him so so yeah so i'm curious so growing up as a kid at some point and maybe you were an adult but when was the first time your path crossed with the grouper at some point you got into one of these things and you uh, know, what, what was that 12 story? years old 12 years old man i'll never forget it 12 really? years old the santa sanibel causeway bridge um, you know, you, you heard about people doing it back then. And, uh, I remember doing it and, it, and it's crazy how we do it. It's a huge hook. It's a 20, it's yeah. 20 on. I mean, yeah. The size describe that hand. setup if you would. So my setup now is a little different from back then. Uh, <laughs> now I just do an anchor rope, literally your anchor <laughs> rope with a hook on the other end with a bait. Yeah. And, uh, that's not an exaggeration. I've got videos of us doing right, it. Right. I'm looking at them um, now. It, yeah. Yeah, you know, it doesn't stress the fish out, which is crazy to think. And it's the only way you can really get those 400s up. Yeah. You know, on rod and reel, there's just so many hidden variables, and your chances of snapping off are huge. Right. And what that does is that hurts, that hurts the fish. Right. You know, in right. the long run, he's walking around with that. We had to pull one up on the boat yesterday because he was just entangled in uh, fishing line. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how he hit the bait, you know, because right. there's so much fishing line wow. on him. How strong and, he is. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, 
it's a fun time. Man. Yeah. It's a fun so, time. So, so tell us that but, story from when you were 12, when you first saw this guy. Yeah. Sanibel Causeway. Uh, I was, uh, 12. It was B span. I'll, I'll never forget this. We went down to the beach with, uh, after a football game with like, you know, a couple of the players and stuff and our parents had a little barbecue. What's in the kids? Nico Santoro. I'll never forget this kid. The dude, there's like, <laughs> there's like 500 pound fish underneath his bridge. I'm like, you're crazy. Yeah. You're crazy. He's like, I'm telling you, man, let's do it. You're like, no he way. He throws this huge, yeah. And he throws this huge rod and reel with a Jack Cravel down and whack. <laughs> I mean, we both fought it together for like 10 minutes. And by the time we got it up, it was only a small one. It was like a hundred pounds. Yeah. And uh, as we got it up close to it, it snapped us off. I mean, we saw it clear as day. We had him in about four feet of water. Oh, there was man. a sandbar there. Yeah. And he just took off. And we were like, oh, my God. And from there, uh, Nico and I, I – Nico was always my fishing buddy growing up. Uh, yeah. We, we would chase stuff all around. Wow. Um, it, it was a good time, man. And uh, I never really got back into that fish um, – just to be honest with you, right when I hit high school, I was so consumed with sports in school. Yep. You know, fishing was definitely was on the back burner. Yeah. You know, I was chasing a scholarship. Yep. And uh, that's that was my primary goal. And and right afterwards, you know, when you get a little older, you, you get right back to your passion, and that's what it was. Right. And, um, so you now you, I get to. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. No. 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 You go. Oh, thanks. Um, no, you're good. Though. I can imagine as a 12 year old kid. I mean, you know, some, seeing pulling something like that up, even though you didn't land it, but seeing it is just like, whoa. I mean, you probably laid awake at night thinking about that fish, and that's, I mean, usually what keeps us coming back for more are the ones that you didn't catch, you know. And so, you kept fishing. You're chasing sports, and then you got into fishing. So, when did you, and how did you then? get hooked up with the state to be able to do something, you know, where you're fishing for these as part of research, you know, how did you get hooked, hooked in there? As dumb as this sounds, um, I believe, I don't know. Yeah. It's, there's two story. There's two stories behind it. Like, um, <laughs> there was, there was a, there was a, yeah, there was a state officer that I met a woman and she asked me what I was targeting one day from a charter. And I said, yeah. a black trooper. And she was like, oh, they're endangered. I was like, yeah, but I do it right. You know, because there was other people doing it here. And, and the main thing is, you just don't take them out of the water. You can't. Right. Right. And I never have unless, and I really haven't up to the certain level that I'm at because I, I just never did. You know, I was afraid yeah. I was going to get in trouble. And she was asking for photos and I was showing her photos and she was like, wow, I'm actually kind of impressed. You need to call us and let's see if we can do something. I was uh -huh. like, all right, it's cool. Well, the guy I ended up getting contact with already followed me on Instagram. Oh, and he was cool. like, yeah, man, like we were already planning on hitting you up. So no way. Like, <laughs> they were yeah, stalking yeah, you. Like, this is perfect. Like, <laughs> so they gave, uh, they gave me and my fiance and I a special activities license which is to target this fish for the state to conduct research. Um, it's a pretty in-depth license. Not a lot of people have it. Like um, a special activities license is, you know how like you can go to Bass Pro and they've got like tarpon in a tank and yeah, stuff? Like you're not right. allowed to have that. Right. They have that special license to do that. It's right called on. special activities license. So they gave it to us for this Goliath grouper. And um, it, it's, it's, we've done so much with this fish so far. Like we're the first company to ever put a um, radio transmitter in one. We literally, you know, put a chap size dick transmitter in a fish and surgically sewed it up. Oh, we've cool. done that with a few species now. Yeah. And it's just cool because nobody knew a lot about this fish yeah. um, until we really started conducting this, this research and now we're just learning so much new stuff daily. You know, people didn't realize that it's a wolf pack style fish. Yeah. You know, if you're on one, there's six down there. Oh, gnarly. Um, yeah. And, and, it, and it's little things that we've learned as far as they're attracted to sound. So when we get over the wreck, I'm sitting there turning the motor on and letting the clients be as loud as they want because they're seeing, Oh, oh dinner bell. Yeah. You know, it's an opportunist. There's such an opportunist hunter that, you know, they're, they're so big in size, they, they almost need it easy for them. Right. And a lot of That's people right. think that they're just, yeah. You see them coming if you're do, another smaller fish. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and um, a lot of people think that they're destroying the wrecks. In reality, 90% um, of their diet is a box crab. Huh. Besides that, when we show up and ring the dinner bell, that's on us. Yeah, right. You know, we have to get that fish up quicker than they anticipate, you know, and 
the fish have spread out, which is, it makes it more of a challenge, but at the same time, I like a challenge. You know, I don't think it's fair that I get to show up to this place on a Saturday and drop my bait and catch a trophy. Yeah. Right. This guy has to chase all week for it. You know, it's so I like the challenge. Yeah. And I'll, I don't know how you agree with it. I think fishing has become way too easy for everybody. Yeah. With all the it's electronics. Like yeah. And all the yeah, reports. It, it can be for, for sure. I, I like what you're doing is you're moving from rec to rec and structure to structure, ringing the bell and seeing what you get. And so with your clients, then you, you have, you bring uh, folks out with you and you drop down on a spot. You have basically, like you mentioned, uh, a, a rope, like a line, uh, like an anchor line with a massive hook and a big old chunk of something. You get one of these things and then your clients bring it up and what you have, which is cool, is then they get to take a shot with it, right? Because these fish are, you're never going to see them. And then you, these guys get in the water, take some cool pictures while you let the fish, you know, off, off the hook and he'll go away. Now, but these are big, massive fish and there's a pretty cool video of one of your guys, I think, reaching over the rail of the boat trying to unhook it and this fish throws its tail and the tail has got to be like 12 you know 20 inches just wide like a big broom and it and it smacks them you know so talk about some of like the the you know some of the i don't know the the physical me by the way oh was it (laughs) (laughs) sorry (laughs) but it just shows the power of that thing it looks like you're getting punched by like tyson or something so talk about these fish and when they're you know active at the boat how you know kind of sketchy that could be um, I'll be honest with you. I, I feel like that's the, the, ch- the <laughs> man, how do I describe it? I feel like that's the, that's the fish's chance right. to take it back out on me. Yep. <laughs> you know, when we come up, when he comes up, you know, he's still green because the hand lining, it only takes about a two minute fight, you know, and he's up at the surface compared to on rod and reel. It's going right. to be a 15 minute fight. And that just stresses the fish out. So when he comes up, he's still pretty damn green. Yeah. And that's his chance to really go toe to toe if you notice a lot of the times i don't use gloves either you know i feel like that's just the hmm. you know and that gives him his chance man to beat up on me a little bit you yeah. know he deserves it he he, <laughs> he just helped me out he just made me some money right. you know he, he he can he can throw a couple bows at me real quick yeah um uh, it's cool. a fun fish man to go hand in hand with you yeah. know I, I i literally do it on a daily basis and yeah it's fun and I, i've done i've landed so many um like the water shot our spots, you know, they're not really heavily shark populated. They are yep. sometimes out of the year and I'll tell them, Hey, oh, this isn't a good time of the year to do it. Right. For the most part, man, you, you're making so much noise and everything. Everything's pretty much spooked. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you get a cool opportunity with that. Right. The other thing is um, you get to do a little bit of research. Every fish that we land, we conduct some research on. Um, we do a anal fin sample. Mm-hmm. You get to name it. Um, we pretty we make sure she's not one that we've caught before. So we're going to take new measurements to see where she was at. Oh, cool. And, um, and then, yeah, you get to name her. Yeah. yeah. And then you pass that information, I imagine, what each week, each month, back to the state for them to, to, to use for their studies. Um, and then what do you get out of that? So at some point you get like a report that they, so will they summarize all of that and kind of help you understand across the year or across some time frame, sort of what you're doing and what these fish are, are looking like? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, it's showing how many times we've caught them, how, how big the growth rate is, yeah. um, the big, big project we're about to invest a lot of time and money into starting in October is we have, uh, three new transmitters set up literally the spots that I fish. Mm. Um, the other transmitters have been set up south, which is spots that I have fished and we've done good there, but I want to know how my fish are literally at, at my spots. Right. So, so this so is tracking movement. Doing, is that correct? Correct. Yeah. I'll be cool. able to know where they're pinging. Yep. I want to know if they're moving back and forth. I would like to know where they're moving during the day because there's certain times that I've noticed they haven't been on the structure. They've been off of it. Yep. I'm wondering if they're foraging for crabs around that time. Right. Is there a feeding pattern? There's, there's just a lot of good answers that will come out of this scenario. And it's going to help us protect this fish in the long run. Right, you know, right. I, like I said, I agree with it opening a slot, but I think it should be like a 22 inch to 30 inch slot. Yeah, Those right. are the ones you want to eat. These three to 500 pound fish, they're so high in mercury content worms. The meat's not even good. Right. It, I mean, it's not, you know, Yep. not a fan. Yeah, no, I get it, man. That's cool. And seeing that movement pattern is cool. I mean, when, when in my past, I worked with a, a Monterey Bay Aquarium out here in, in 
uh, in Monterey in California, and there was some tagging work. And it's so neat to see the movement of these fish because you really have no idea. You can catch them here, and you can catch maybe the same one or a similar species, you know, a mile away in different structure. But when you have a tag in one and you're watching it move, it's pretty cool because you really get an idea for how these things move day to day or hour to hour. So then how big is your average fish that you're bringing up, your average grouper sort of day to day? Uh, between two and four hundo. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then is anybody else really <laughs> out there, you know, like – well, guys sort of see you out there because your boat's cool, man. I'm going to talk about it in a moment. And it's visible, right? Because you've got – it's just a cool-looking boat. Yeah. And I, I'm yeah. sure people – I can imagine that just because fishermen or fishermen might set up on you and see where you're fishing and want to grab one too. So will, you, will guys kind of sort of peep so, you out and like fish before, next to you? Before, you? before you bait me, man, before you bait me because <laughs> I know a couple of my boys are going to listen to this and they'll be like, Marco. <laughs> so if you know me – and, or if I ask you to, I'm usually at the spot. To be, I'm usually just one of the first ones there. I'm going to be dead on it. And, you know, some people that aren't out there every day, charter captain wise, there's enough fishing wise. I really don't have to compete with any charter captains. Yeah. Um, uh, cool. But as far as recreational or recreational anglers, um, boaters, yep. I'll be the first one to say, if I know you or some, I'll tell you to come right up on me. Yeah. And people are, they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, get here. Some glad grouper fish. And what happens is when we stack up on each other, the fish stacks up. Oh, uh, yeah, cool. They know, oh, hey, there's the dinner bell. But you got to know me. Like, don't be just coming over <laughs> to me now because I might be doing other stuff. So, uh, you know, I just might be targeting other fish. I mean, tarpon's a good time of the year here. I've had people roll up on me while I'm tarpon fishing, thinking I'm grouper fishing. I'm like, no, text me. That's right. Call me. Do something. You yeah, know? yeah, um, yeah. But as far as that, man, you know, I, I honestly feel like at the end of the day, we're all out there to have a good time if you're out there on a boat fishing. Yeah. I don't care if you're on that person's boat or that person's boat. So we should all get along. We should all feed information to each other because at the end of the day, we're just all trying to have fun. No yeah. one's out there trying to be better. I mean, some people are, and, but that, don't even bother with that. Yeah, you know? I feel just that. Have fun. Yeah, 100%, man. So. Okay, so then you're splitting time – um, on both side, kind of coasts. And so on that Sanibel mm-hmm. Island, I guess the, be the Western side on the Gulf coast side is where you're yeah. fishing grouper, but then you also have tarpon and snooks. What else are you targeting and what else are you fishing for in that area? Um, triple tail, believe it or not. Um, triple tail is a fish that I've really focused on. Hmm. Um, it's a, it's a delicious fish. It's one of the oldest fish in the world. Um, it's, it's, in my opinion, and I, and I haven't had a lot of people disagree, I think it's the best eating fish in our area. Yeah. So, you know, I, I have, and it's, and it's an easy fish to target as far as casting because it sits up on the surface on a buoy. You get to see it. It's kind of like an Easter egg hunt. You're looking all day for this floating plate at the yeah. surface. Oh, that's cool. And that's the fish. It's pretty cool looking. Um, sharks. I do a lot of sharks, man. You know, um, I have a black tip migration that runs up our coast. We have a sandbar migration that runs up our coast. We have a spinner shark migration that runs up our coast. Um, That being said, if you got those three types, you also got your big bull sharks. The world record hammerhead um, was caught in Boca Grande five years ago or six years ago. Wow. Uh, we, we, We get a massive shark. But it's weird. Like, we get big sharks here, but if you go to the other coast, yeah, they're just littered with sharks. Like, the really? Sharks are everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I mean, which is crazy to me because, like, I always thought we had a lot of sharks, you know. We have a cool uh, spinner shark population. Yeah. And uh, what we'll do is we'll get poppers and we'll take the hooks off. And we, you'll see them. You'll see them out there crushing stuff. And you throw the poppers in there and just work them. Oh. And they just blow it up. No way. Just I to mean, see them go come. crazy on the surface. How cool. Oh yeah. I mean, it's a good time. We've got videos on the Instagram that there's times that we'll have a thousand sharks literally underneath our boat at once. And you just drop your rod and you just dip it in and boops. Um, the other thing we do with uh, the sharks is we've actually had a couple of world records and we've released them. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm not a fan of killing sharks. I know for a fact we've had the biggest spinner shark. We've had, um, a couple female world records. I mean, seriously, it, it, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, gosh, and we've just released them, you know, we're, we're, we're not about that, you know, now don't get me wrong. I like eating fish and yep. there's fish out there that I am going to take home and fillet, but oh, yeah. 
trophy style stuff that I could kill, I don't. Yeah. I'm just not a fan. hundred percent, man. That's cool too, because you know, you have a nice following on Instagram. You probably have a really great following locally and people look up to you for that, you know, and, and when they see the, the top guys bringing these things home, they get, especially like the recreation guys, I'd say, get a little more fired up on doing the same. But when they see, you know, the top yeah, guys letting no, them go, you know, it, sure. it's a, it's a, it's a positive influence. So then, um, on the other side of the coast, you had, you said you run a different boat. And I think I've seen pictures. that's a little bit bigger where it's deeper water and you're going after bigger fish or, um, you know, selfish and such. So in Mahi, so talk about that fishery and what you're doing over there. Uh, in January and February, it's a new venture. And I, um, I've got a business partner. That's a 34 whaler. It's a very nice boat. Oh, man, um, yeah. Awesome. Boat. Yeah. And it's all decked out and, amazing sound system all new electronics on our electronics you can watch netflix <laughs> so while we're trolling we'll put netflix on you got kids or something you know because it's a big oh. boat we can all walk around and, oh, um we're, we're we're trolling um we we troll for sailfish and dorado uh mahi and then uh we've got some spots that we do some deep dropping for red snapper grouper and then we've got this one spot called the sand pit it's about 40 feet of water and it's littered with massive sharks and goliath. Wow. Um, it's right near Bull Shark Barge, which is a very big fish haven for goliath grouper as well. And they're not your babies. Really? You know, they're, they're, your, they're your three to fives yeah. all around. And the sharks are anywhere from you know, generally 8 to 12 foot. You're not going to deal with anything smaller than that. Good Lord. And it's instant. You throw the chum back out. I mean, and it's like you can, you literally, it, it'll be less than five minutes. All of a sudden the sharks are circling. You're like, yeah. Hey. You're like, which one you want? Like, which one you want? You're going to be in this for a while. Yeah. Have fun. But um, we, we, we try to go chase the, the, you know, first thing in the morning, we try to go get a sail, you know, a sailfish. If you've never caught a sailfish or even not even hooked into one, it is the most amazing acrobatic dancing fish I've ever dealt with. And uh, I deal with tarpon, you know, tarpon, yeah. you're going to get your three to five amazing launches, but how a sailfish just dances on the water, you know, it's breathless. You sit there and you freeze. I, I still freeze all the time when they start dancing. I'm like, uh, you know, and it's a good time. I love that fish so that, much. If there's one fish I could target for the rest of my life, it'd be sailfish. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So then how do you compare, I guess, the, I mean, call it health and air quotes or just the just the, the fishery in general on both sides of the coast you fish? Do you see any changes? You've been doing this for a long time and you got a really good finger on the pulse of, you know, the ocean there on both sides. How, how do you, you know, characterize, I guess, the any changes, if at all, in the populations that you're, that you're, uh, you know, targeting? Um, man, you're just, uh, or you're going to do this talk. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lake Okeechobee, it's a lake in the middle of Florida. Um, when it starts overflowing, they dump the fresh water into two parts of the state. One being right by my backyard, mm. which has destroyed the, um, uh, the grass beds, which right. is just not allowed to bait, and then it causes red tide. Right. You see some stuff, and I'm I'm not gonna sit here and man, I hate doing this conversation. Yeah. No, it's all um, good. <laughs> you didn't, and no, I'm not trying good, to take good. you and there. I'm gonna, I just want to be politically <laughs> correct here because a lot of people. Are, yeah, it's a tough it's issue. A contentious um, issue. Totally I believe. Yeah, I believe there's there's two two serious issues here. So yes, the lake, and if you're here, you know all about the lake, but also our our own wrongdoing. Yeah. You know, uh, us as residents of this area and, and population has skyrocketed, which is great for business. But at the same time, growth does hurt your mm. fishery because of natural things. Septic being one, right. you know, the septic runoff is crazy right. to the fertilizers just from residential. You know, I, I mm. see it all the time. I live on a canal and I, I, all our yards are beautiful. We all have the Florida tan down here in Florida, yep. gray green yards. And these guys got to fertilize it to keep it going. And sure. The landscapers, you know, they do the same thing. They're just trying to get it done. And all that stuff just gets pushed into the canal. Mm. So we're hurting ourselves, I would say, with a more open vein. And then Lake O just opens it all up. It, it, it sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Yep. It's a big sugar issue as well. Right. You know, big sugar is populated here. And I wouldn't say they paid off government officials. I don't know the political stuff, but everybody seems to right. say, you know, our, our politicians, their campaign money comes from there. Right. So right. that, that, that sucks because you don't think the issue is really never going to be fixed because it's all the way up high. And I just, it's, 
sucks, man. But at the same time, though, I feel like uh, it makes you a better fisherman. You know, just because things are tough, that I, that makes you have to work harder. And that's yeah. what I've done. And, you know, if anything, I feel like I'm catching more fish. And mm. People are like, you're crazy. I'm like, no, I just keep working harder and harder and harder. And then where I go everywhere else around the state of Florida, I slay it. Right. I really feel like being here and being dealt with the constant change right, and right. formalities and, and variables, um, it makes you, it makes you want to adapt. It makes you quick to adapt. It makes you a stronger fisherman. Yeah, it yeah, really does. Right. You don't find yourself just doing the same old thing every day because that's what's working. You're actually saying, this is not working today. Let me figure something new out. And so, like you said, you're, you're pretty light on your feet, you know, and you're, and you're testing new things out and able to, to, to thrive. Now, then contrast, so you're talking like kind of near shore-ish. What about the offshore species, the things that you're, you know, going 10, 15 miles out maybe? Any, any I don't know, ch- thoughts on any changes, positive or negative, on what you're seeing out there with the fish? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't fish past, like, even when I do the other coast, all yeah. my sails and stuff are, like, three miles oh, offshore. Oh, geez, you're close. Okay, cool. Um, three, just three those more five. pelagic species. What do yeah. you see in there? Yeah. I mean, uh, I love it. You know, yeah. they're, they're, they're there. It's feeling they're good. There. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I've had some cool. personal bests this year and in, in several categories, especially in Mahi. I went back to back personal bests this year. Oh, wow. Um, sailfish as well. Got a personal best this year. Um, I feel like it's tough to say, man. Like I, I'm, I'm not, I, I feel like the fishery's still strong in many ways, but cool. you know, of course you hear the old timers talking about, how you could do this yeah, and course. that. And it's like, wow, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> but human population is the biggest concern. Right. You know, right. growth is what That's right. hurts anything. So, yeah. Um, you know, I, I hope everybody practices safe, safe catch and release more often than not. Yeah. You know, there's no point of taking home 30 snapper. Right. Like, take home 10. Yeah. You know? Yep. And and even ten, that's a lot. That's a lot of fillets, right? That's twenty fillets. Yeah, you know, that's twenty meals. You know, right? No doubt. So, uh, so then, you know. But besides that, live your life. You know. Yeah, that's cool. One hundred percent. But that's yeah. I like that attitude of you know, uh, sort of moderate uh, take. You know, and then just conservation in general. It's just, I mean, for the kids, for my kids' kids, etc. I mean, I mean yeah, I'm all about that. Um, now. So you made this really freaking awesome you know, lifestyle of being on the water, you know, in, with doing your charter stuff. But you've also done uh, some things where you've been on, you know, TV. You write for, you know, Coastal Angler magazine. So talk about that. Talk about what you've been doing with anything related to, to TV and with the magazine. Um, done a bunch of TV, man. You know what what we do is pretty cool, and if we can show any audience that was sitting here catching this massive fish and how we protect it. And, you know, a little knowledge, knowledge is, is a dangerous weapon to anybody. Yeah. So if we can give that weapon to people, you know, hopefully they use it for the good. Right. Um, so that's what we're constantly trying to feed. Um, writing with coastal angler magazine, Nadine has given me an opportunity to write for them. Very cool. Um, something I've always wanted to do. Uh, believe it or not, my wife helps me, uh, my fiance helps me co-write. Cool. I'm horrible at spelling. Um, <laughs> shout out to Taylor. Got you. I'll give you a shout out. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, TV wise, you know, that is the end game for me. I really like my own show. Yeah. Um, we've got some, we've got some big things coming up and, you uh, know, with some bigger names that will hopefully, uh, point me in the right direction to, uh, really achieve those goals. Oh, that's cool. Um, we, we've already been offered some cool stuff, but just, we keep holding off. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, we got time. We right. got time. You know, let's enjoy what we're doing now. Right. You know, and and we really are. We live. We get to go wherever we want. No kids. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Enjoy that. It's it, it's a good time. Right. Yeah. For real. Because <laughs> that could change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, what we keep hearing. We're all, yeah, we're all right. We're gonna hold off. Yeah. We so, got, we're going to Costa Rica. We just got so much Mexico. I mean, those trips are already booked and planned. Good those deal. Those all come out soon. Right so. on. That's that's Can't the way do to that do with it. Kids, man. No, man. It, it changes. You know, it changes, but you you start to adapt, and then you know you you start 
you, you modify your lifestyle to incorporate the kids because I'm, I'm guessing that you're going to, you know, feel strongly about introducing your kids, you know, and family into the lifestyle you have. And that and that'll happen, you know. Um, but for Coastal Angler Magazine, you know, what do you typically write about? Are you writing about the conditions, local bites or, you know, big, broader topics? A little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, people... I don't think they pick it up for my articles. I think they pick it up because it's me writing it mm. and they know I'm going to write about something, yeah. you know, whether it's uh, a cool catch with my clients. Um, I've taken out quite a few sports athletes. So sometimes I'll write a story about how the trip went. Yeah. Um, tips. Yeah. I'll give some tips here and there. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, I'll talk about a fish, you know, how to catch that here and there. Um, I recently just talked about our water quality, but my story was geared towards more, we can all do our own part you yeah. know, right now right. to help. Right, right, right. Um, because nobody ever wants to take fault. That's what sucks about this, too. Yeah. Like, I, I promise you, science will back me up saying we are causing damage as well. Yeah. So let's start here now. Then once we fix here now, we can really take it to the big house. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's, it sucks, man. It's really it sucks because they dump straight toxic algae water in right. us and our water has to battle that yeah you know um, but then again become a better become a better fisherman yeah know, that's true yep that, that's true adapt and then also do what you can to help others and what i th- what i th- really like about your instagram is that it's a it's really fun right you're seeing people with these massive fish but what it does is it's like man i, I mean look i've been chasing fish my whole life and i, I think groupers are cool but I didn't know that you guys had 500 pounders that you're playing with every day. And so I'm like, wow. And the point here is that like it inspires other people to who may not, might, might not even go to the ocean very often, but they're seeing this, this research happening and it just kind of inspires people to care a little more. You know, when we know, wow, that, I didn't know that fish was out there. Some people might actually maybe vote for somebody <laughs> to get into office who is pro ocean or do something locally, you know? So I think all the stuff you're doing, whether it's writing TV, Instagram is just, it's just good for, for the, for the ocean and the fish, man. So I, I admire you for that. We're all about positive vibes, man. You know, there's so much negativity in this world these days. Like I get to live such an awesome life. How can I be negative? Yeah. Like, I get to do what I do every day. And meet cool people, and you just gotta, you just gotta live life, you know, and love it because you're only getting one. Yeah, you know, that's a proven fact. You're right. only getting one right now. Yeah. So, I mean, live it up and take chances, take risks. They don't pay out. Oh well, you know, live it up. Yeah, man, hundred percent. Well, James, that's cool, man. So, hey. Any other shouts out? I know you shouted out to your fiance. Anybody else you want to just, you know, call out right now and that's been a part of, you know, your success and just you're part of your ocean life maybe in um, general? Probably a lot, I'm sure. Uh, well, let's, 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 yeah. Um, without a doubt, um, you know, my parents, mm-hmm. you know, they helped and pushed me. Taylor most definitely gave me the drive. Um, probably my best friend, uh, Mike. Um, we started school together. We have really come a long way in this industry. You know, we both also humbled each other several times. Mm-hmm. You know, we have both. Okay, all right, let's let's be real now. And you know, and, and it's good to have that person in your corner because at the end of the day, that's the one guy you can go to and say, "Hey, is this the right thing or the wrong thing?" Yeah. And you can be real with one another because you've known each other. Yeah. Um, industry wise, Akuma. Akuma mm. um, and Navionics, um, Paul, Dave, and John, those guys have really, uh, they're industry guys, and they have really taken me underneath their wing, and um, they've just opened a lot of good doors for me. You know, they've they, they seen that I'm a hard worker. I've never let them down. They have put me in several situations to make sure something happens, and I've never let them down, and they yeah. know, I'm, and I'm going to work hard. Right on. You know, that's the one thing they, I think they can all collectively say about me is, Marco's going to work hard, you know, if, if anything, he's going to, he's going to mm. push it and push it and push it until yeah. he gets it done. Right on. Right um, on. Yeah. I think that's, uh, yeah. Everybody cool. else has helped me, you know, my fans, yeah. all those guys. I appreciate cool. all the Instagram people. 
That's um, awesome. Don't get upset at me if I didn't mention your name. You guys <laughs> totally baiting me on this podcast. <laughs> you guys know. Totally baiting me on uh, back to back. No, you man. went straight for the water stuff. You know, I don't like talking about the water stuff. That's making me think. <laughs> no, you did a good job. Well, you know, it's cool because, again, what, why doing this podcast is so fun is, is that people somebody will hear this from another other side of the globe and really have no idea about any of the stuff that you're doing and just come away with this really neat understanding of you of the animals of the ocean the people and and then the issues you know so that's why this is so fun but you you were great to speak with man so uh, you know James looking forward I know you know what's next is you're you're you know going to continue doing this and um I, you know, I'm going to keep following you, and as you grow, man, I, I'm going to keep tracking you. And maybe get you back on to, you know, to to see what you're what you're up to in the future. If that's cool with you. Yeah, for sure, man. No, this is a cool. This is a cool interview for sure. It's not. This wasn't my uh, the other ones I usually have to do. <laughs> other ones I got to do by the book. You know, uh, I got the podcast. Pretty sure I'm a lot of curse and stuff, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. Uh, well, yeah, I really appreciate chatting yeah. with you today, and uh, you know, keep it keep it up, and uh, folks, and I'll in the show notes, I'll put a uh, link to your Instagram, and then uh, for folks online uh, listening, uh, go check these fish out. I mean, there's great video of 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 the, the Goliath grouper of all the other species James is going after his boat, uh, his fiance, just a great lifestyle, and then uh, Goliath. Uh, you tell, tell us your website again. Sorry, I don't have it in front of me. It's goliathfishing.com. Yeah. Um, the handle is cool. Cap James Marco. Um, yeah, man. Cool. It was a cool interview, man. I appreciate you, uh, you know, hit me up, man. It's cool. Yeah, Fun for time. sure. Right on, James. Well, hey, thanks so much. Good luck with everything, and uh, we'll be in touch. All right, my man. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. Hey there. Thanks so much for listening to the podcast today. We really appreciate all the support. Uh, if you like what you heard, uh, please, you know, uh, hype us up on social media. Always appreciate, you know, spreading the word. Uh, give us a nice little rating on the uh, your podcast app and uh, just keep tuning in. If you're interested in being on the show and sharing some of your life stories, uh, hit me up, josh at thisoceanlife.tv. You can PM me on Facebook or Instagram. Anyway, thanks again for being here and uh, have a great day.